friends. It's Tracy from Nova Scotia Living. I was just rubbing my eye. Oh, it's red. I'll put some visine in it. It's quarter to six in the morning and I'm getting up now. I was up or, or I went to bed about 11.30 and slept. Maze was just up a little while ago. Uh, he couldn't get his blanket back up on his top bunk and I'm just like, I'm going to get up now and try to get some stuff done while I can because... I plan on doing a lot of work today, and if I have to have a power snooze later, I will. So, yeah, I'm going to get my coffee going, and, uh, yeah, I think the first thing after I'm done that is I'm going to get my rapid pies going, because I'm going to have to do, do it twice. Like, well, I'll show you the packages in a minute. Oh, the flash is on. Um, I just want to show you, last night I had to... Uh, I didn't really have room in the coolers for this broth, so I plugged them back in and just put them on keep warm. And when I tried to plug this one back in, it sparked. Like it sparked there and uh, flicked the switch for the upstairs kids' bedroom. So, of course, they've come running downstairs saying the power's out. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> and um, uh, we went down and switched the breaker. And I thought it was an extension cord. Um because after that happened I plugged it in over here and it still wasn't turning on and I thought it was the extension cord turns out it wasn't it was actually that red slow cooker because after I got it situated again um, I plugged it in out in the porch and it sparked again so I think that red slow cooker is kaput it was my mom's but I've used it umpteen times but I think it's kicked the bucket there's that bone broth looking good. I'm going to try to can that up today. I'm going to take that off the heat. I have it down on low. Uh, but I need to get my coffee. Just a minute. All right, friends, I got my coffee. I've been busy. I went and got the slow cookers. Oh. Um, there's still some chicken broth left in that one. But I emptied the other two slow cookers with the chicken broth in it and put it in Harriet. It's about 26 cups in here. Probably won't use every single last drop of it, but for the next batch I'll just put that third slow cooker um, broth in here. Now I'm going to have my coffee. It's 6.13. May's just came downstairs, wanted to drink water, so oh, hard to say if he'll go back to bed. I sent him back upstairs, though. All right, guys, it's 6.21. I'm halfway done my coffee, not even halfway. But I have the chicken broth over here in a roll and boil, and that's what you want. I know I have videos on how to make raw pie, but I'll try to do it short, like quick little spurts today. But you need to have your broth in there, and it needs to be a roll and boil like that, like constant. I'm going to put these two potato packages. This is just potato pulp if you're not aware what raw pear pie is. It's if you juiced like 10 pounds of potatoes, you save the pulp throughout the liquid. And then we're going to rehydrate these with the broth that we have over there. Now I didn't season that broth yet. I'm going to put a package of onion soup mix in there. I usually do that. And uh, yeah, it. it well, you'll see the consistency. It doesn't get the same consistency as potatoes would <laughs> before this process. It gets kind of like jelly, but you'll see. I'm going to get this. I always do this in a turkey roaster. I find it's easier. I have my potato masher, and I you'll see what I'm doing. And i got to put um, a cup or a half a cup of butter in here. I forget. I'll have to look. But let me get it set up, get you guys set up, and I'll be back. Hey, right, friends. It's still rolling. You can see it's kind of a weird consistency, but it's that's just potato pulp. I have half a cup of butter in here. I'm just gonna try to break it up a bit. And this is the this is the hard part. I don't want little people around my ankles or anything when I'm doing this because it's so hot. Let me get a big measuring cup. because it'll scold you for sure. So I'm gonna do it bit by bit. All the while keep that, keeping that broth going. 
and it's about eight cups. And you just watch. This will. Uh, if you've seen me do this before, you know you know what's going to happen. But this soaks all up. It takes a little while, but it does. And you don't think as much liquid would go into this, but it really does. It really does. I'm glad that I'm doing this now. It's only 6:30. I'm supposed to bring uh, Misha and Mays and Maziah into Mays's little school thing for 8.30, so this will be in the oven. This takes about two and a half, three hours to make. And then i got to do this all over again because i got two more packages of this. But when I get back from bringing them to their little school thing, I want to strain those turkey bones and those stock pots. I should explain for people that haven't watched my past couple of videos. I did put two big water bath canners full of turkey bones and a couple of ham bones on to boil and simmer for the past couple of days. I'm going to can it up to make bone broth. Anyways, I just took those off the stove and I want to strain those. Well, that's the hardest part about this whole thing, just straining those. I need to take all the bones out and strain it and strain it. Um, I don't get too particular because some people use cheesecloth to get every single little fine thing out. and the broth looks beautiful when you do that but I'm not that type of girl I don't want bones in my broth but I don't care if it's a little bits of turkey or whatever it cans all for the same time as if you were gonna can meat oh, there was a big chunk of chicken skin or something in there. I mean, you can put that in there. I just don't like extra gristle or whatever. So that's about 16 cups. I usually get about, on the package it says around 22, 23 cups, but sometimes it gets 20 like five. It all depends. I think it depends on <laughs> where you live, the moisture in the air, the potatoes that you get, where the potatoes were grown, you know, all that stuff. But I'll speed up this process and then when it's uh, all done, or at least this part of it, I'll bring you back and show you what these potatoes look like because this, this is a labor of love. This is this is good it all goes according to your eye really I don't go specifically for the directions I use it as a guideline but it's hard to pick up on camera but you can see like a clear gel look to some of the wrapper pie it's hard to tell and yeah that's when I know that's enough so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna swig my coffee and get this set up, grab the chicken that I cooked and shredded that's in one of these coolers out in the salt and pepper and we're going to load up three big pans and get them in the oven. So let me get set up.
look, $6.59, and I got them all assembled. So it's like a lasagna, a potato mixture, the meat of choice, potato mixture. Make sure you uh, season this potato and chicken. Like, I didn't really season the chicken yesterday in the slow cooker, if you watched, or if you didn't watch. I just boiled it. So I put lots of salt and pepper. Today, that pepper grinder is not cooperating with me. I want just a regular little rinky-dink pepper shaker for the next go because I think I'm going to stick these in the oven at 350 for two and a half, three hours. I'll just keep rotating the pans and they'll be like kind of crusty and brown on top and so delicious. <laughs> but I have enough chicken to do the next batch and I won't do that till later on this afternoon probably and um, I'm gonna do probably one or two big pans and then four little pans because I like to give one or two to dad and Saritha might want one or something like that it's just individual sizes so yeah let's get these in the oven all right I just had the last swig of my coffee it is eight after seven I'm trying to make a game plan in my head I need to write it down I'm just sitting on the couch now though but I'm going to use that turkey roaster, since it's already dirty, to take the bones out of the turkey water bath canners. And I want to let that broth sit and cool because I have to get the jars that I'm going to can it up in. I want to stick them in the dishwasher. And, uh, yeah, I don't want that broth boiling hot to put in jars that aren't hot. I mean, they'll be hot coming right out of the dishwasher. Since I'm pressure canning this, I don't need to sterilize the jars because it gets so hot in a pressure canner. You need to have clean jars, but you don't need to bake them in the oven or anything like that. But I want to get my jars. I want to get my two pressure canners up from the basement because I like to run two to get it done faster, if you know what I'm saying. And... After I get the bones out in that turkey roaster, it can go to the compost and then I can get that big turkey roaster washed and ready for the next batch of rocker pie, which will be done in, you know, a while, not for a while yet though, but yeah, I want to use the stove top and get that done before I start working on that food that's in the coolers. I might be able to get some cutting up and stuff but cooking I think that takes like the canning I think it takes 90 minutes on the stove I think I'm gonna double check that or 75 minutes it depends on the jar size too I gotta double check I haven't done I haven't canned anything in a little while a few months so yeah I'm gonna I might go um, try to take the bones out of one of those water bath canners then I'm gonna go wake the kids up because uh, they didn't end up going to the little school yesterday. I kind of slept in, but I didn't sleep in today. And that way they they get out of the house a little while. I mean, they'll be done at noon, but yesterday they were just here bumping around the house, which I think they enjoyed anyways, because the summer's kind of been a rat race in regards to day camps and stuff. But <clears throat> I don't want so much screen time going on, if you know what I'm saying, so... All right, let me go tackle one of those water bath canners. All right, I'm going to try to grab what I can with the tongs and then a slotted spoon and put them in here. And then after I'll move that, I'll get a big bowl with like an actual colander and start actually straining the broth. Um, and then what's left over is what I'm going to can. So I'll, uh, I'll show you the process and pictures along the way. All right, I took out a bunch. I was using this thing to sweep in there and get little bits, but I'm still gonna strain this in a bigger colander into, um, I don't know, I might get my other turkey roaster because that'll be bigger than one of those big silver bowls. But yeah, I got out a lot of it, but I know there's still a little bit down there in the bottom and I just wanna get out as much as I can. Yeah, I did pretty good. Wasn't that much after all. I'm going to take it out of here and dump it back in here because it's uh, a little safer, I guess. <laughs> I don't want it to overflow. Uh, 7.30, I might attempt pot number two. We'll see. All right. They're over here all strained as much as I'm going to do it, which is fantastic. I've got more done this morning than I really thought I was going to, to be honest. 
I'm gonna wash these by hand so they don't take up so much room in the dishwasher. I'm gonna go dump this, then I'm gonna go wake up the kids. All right, pots and pans and bowls all washed. I'm gonna put this stuff away. I'll leave that one out because I'm gonna use it again after. But yeah, it's eight more minutes on that timer for the first time I rotate it. So I'm gonna wait till that's done, then I'm gonna get the kids up. It is 7.44, so not too shabby. The kids are heading out the door. We're going to head to town. I'm going to turn this dishwasher on so the jars will be all clean when I get back. These are all clean. I can put those away unless I end up using some today, which I'm not sure yet. But yeah, so I'm going to get this going. Have Evie. I'm in town. I dropped the kids off. Medea's just gone for blood work, so I said I'd watch him while she went in there. But we just came over to Papa's, about to go in, and uh, she'll come over here when she's done. I shut those rapi pies off. Um, they've been in the oven for an hour now, and I just left the door shut. It should be fine. I'll turn it back on when I get home, because it'll still be warm. She won't be too long, hopefully. And um, it's not like baking a cake or something like that. If it was something like that, I couldn't do it. But yeah, anyways, let's go see Papa. Guys, Medea just got here. I think it's like 9 30 or something like that so i'm gonna head home she's in here having a coffee dad's just down in the basement painting painting some trim but then he's gonna come back up to have a visit oh that banana peeling the kids ate bananas on their way into day camp today i gotta remember to get those out of here or my husband's car will smell like bananas so yeah that oven should be hot i'll just turn it back on and um Hopefully the dishwasher's done. I'll start start that canning stuff. I still need to get my pressure cookers from the basement, though. Pressure canners. Anyways, I'll be back. All right, friends. I just got home. Well, about 10 minutes ago. It's about 5 to 10 now. I brought up the pressure canners from the basement. I brought up, like, lids and, or, yeah, like the little lids. And I turned the oven on as soon as I got home. So I'm going to wash these pressure canners and start digging out the jars because the dishwasher is just about done so those jars will be hot the broth is still pretty hot so i can can it up right away which is good so i'll be back when i have my setup going all right friends well i got stuff set up i'm trying to find a good angle for you guys to see but i do have videos on making this oh i need to get a funnel just a minute oh i can't find my little can funnel I'm gonna have to uh, pour this in a big, yeah, it's not, it's it's warm, it's not hot. I'll pour it in a juice container thing and pour it in because I want to get this going. And I need to get a bowl of vinegar and water to wipe the rims with. Just a little water and a bit of vinegar. So yeah, I'll really try to remember to put my bone broth videos up. <clears throat> I checked all my jars, like you gotta always check the rims on the jars if there's any nicks or cracks or anything, because it won't seal if we do that. I'm gonna bring this over to the sink and fill up my colander, because I don't got my funnel. That's ridiculous. I don't know where it is. Still more in here. But this way I can pour it in with less of a mess than just try to scoop it in without a funnel. So I just pour it in up to the bottom ring of the screw part and I use this stuff in like chicken soup or you can make a gravy out of it if you want you can drink it straight up it's really good really good for you too I might need to I have a few more jars in the dishwasher but I don't know I might need more jars and I, while I was into dads, I was trying to write comments, you know, replies to you guys while I have a moment. 
And one of you said that you can stuff into your freezers. And I'm just like, I might do that with that pork tenderloin. I've never actually canned pork. I've canned all kinds of meat before. But I've never canned pork. Canned like beef and deer and chicken, I think. I can't remember. It's pretty much all the same. But I would just cut that up in little pieces and can it. And then I could add it to different meals. And it'd already be cooked. Ooh, I'm doing good. I haven't got it on the ring yet. I'm still gonna wipe it though. I have my pressure canners over on the stove all washed. I put the right amount of water in it and I put a good glug of white vinegar in it because that helps prevent the jars from being cloudy when they come out. I mean, if you forget to do it, it's not the end of the world. You can wipe that film off, but it just saves an extra step. Oh, this one's heavy. This one has more in it. Yeah. I think I'm gonna need more dishes or jars. I'll bring this over because it's it's a big one. <clears throat> but I'll can up all the stuff I can and this go around. Whew. See if I spill this. I only ever use this pitcher. Normally when I'm canning something, I have to add water to. It's easier to go around with this than whatever. And then I'm just gonna wipe the rims with that water vinegar mixture and put the lids on and the rings. And you only put the rings on like fingertip tight. You don't need to go all she woman on it. So there's still a little room, wiggle room for it to, the air to release and stuff. And then the lid will stick to the, suck down to the jar. Ooh. It's looking good, looking good. more than I thought to be honest I thought I would just I just washed the jars I had up here that I've used the past few days like the tomato sauce ones when I made those cabbage rolls and oh, the ones I used yesterday with the tomatoes and the beans and the corn but I held up a whole whack of jars down in the basement so I'll just have to get those in the dishwasher That one needs a little bit more. There, let me get this going. No, well, my husband's still sleeping. I'm gonna wake him up though. I'll get him to go get the girls because, or well, the girls and May's because I don't like to leave the house when the pressure canner's going. That's certainly not a safe idea to do. And he's not a canner, so he wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't know, you know, if something was going wrong unless it was too late, if you know what I'm saying. So I have these lids sitting in some hot water. Um, some books say you don't have to do that anymore, but I just do it with a habit. It loosens up the little red. You can see that. The red on the inside, I guess. That's what my mind thinks it does. I don't know. Just so it has a better chance of sticking. And bone broth is an easy thing to do. The hardest part was taking those bones out, honestly. And washing those pressure canners. I hate washing those because they're so big and awkward to try to get in the sink. 
but now that I have my canners up here, <laughs> I know I'm going to want to can more stuff. So, like I say, I might can up that tenderloin. So, I'm just using my fingertips to do it tight with my fingertips, but not like with all my muscle. And these jars are hot, but they're not so hot that I can't hold them. Otherwise, I'd be using these things. Oh, I have the washing machine going. My sink's going to gurgle. I went to go put a load in, and I put it at load in yesterday, and I forgot about it. So I have to rewash it. It's kind of stinky. I hate that. But my mind was busy on other things yesterday. And this always looks so pretty. Well, any jarred canned up food looks so pretty. I see lots of pictures of fancy pantries that people have. The shelf displays and stuff. I'm like, I'm a little envious, but I do have a big old basement downstairs with shelves. The shelves were there um, when we moved in, so I don't know. People that lived here over the generations, I'm assuming we're canners. Uh, one more. I'm going to load these in the canner and I'll bring you back and I'll sh show you how many jars I actually got. All right, got them all loaded. Now I need to put these little gaskets. Like I say, I, I'll put my videos down below, but they go under the lip of this and that ensures that the pressure canner seals. But there's a little bit of broth left. I'm just going to put that in the rapid pie mixture that I do next. Well, the next time I do it, so I'll just use it there. It's not really enough to can and I'm not wasting it. So let me get the gaskets in and uh, I'll bring you back. All right, so that's what it looks like. It's just under the lip. You gotta make sure that you clean the gasket after every time because there could be like residue on it. And that's very important to have it a nice clean gasket uh, so it seals the pressure canner and you don't uh, waste all your energy trying to can something and it never seals. So I'm going to get them on the pressure canner, turn the burners on high, and uh, yeah, wait for it to boil. All right, I just rotated those rapid pies again, put them in for another 45. Those, pan those pots aren't up to boil yet. What time is it? 10.37. i got to look up the time that I have to pressure can this, because I might be getting mixed up with actually canning meat. This is just the broth, so it might not be as long. I forget now. I've done it enough times I should remember, but I'll look it up and, um, yeah, I'll let you guys know. I just looked at my old video. It's 25 minutes, so thanks a lot, Tracy. <laughs> um, that's for quart jars, but, I mean, uh, we have pint jars in there, too, and it'll all, it'll still work. It'll still work. I think it's only a five-minute difference, but, I mean, whatever. So... Yeah, I need to wait till those come up to boil, and then you'll see the steam come out of the little poker on top. And when it's really aggressive, like full steam, I need to put the timer on for 10 minutes. And I'll show you when the steam comes out and it's blasting in the air. Hey friends, I washed my water bath canners. Mally just got up and is having some cereal. I've been up. I've been well, you were upstairs. Um, I brought the water canners downstairs. I'm thinking I'm going to do that other turkey bone broth after I'm done all of this cooking and stuff. Um, but while I brought those downstairs, I brought up more jars. And I have an abundance of pint-sized jars. So I think I'm going to can up that tenderloin in pint-sized jars. But now I'm going to stick them in the dishwasher. Oh, and I emptied the broth that was left in that slow cooker in that pot over there. That's going to be the chicken wrapper pie broth. And I'm going to wash that. So, excellent. All right, it's all loaded up. I even put the rings in there because they were down in the basement. I have a bunch up here, but I just want to give them a good wash. And those jars, and that's the slow cooker. And I'm going to run it through. All right, I don't know if you can see, but there's steam coming out pretty strong. So I just set the timer for 10 minutes, and we got to let it do this. And these little red pokers were down, but that it just poked up, and it means there's pressure in these pots. 
so you can't move it don't try to take the lid off of it or anything like that so we just need to let these pots vent for 10 minutes and then we're going to put the weights on okay i know this is loud but it's been 10 minutes these are the little weights i use a 10 pound weight on mine and we got to put it on top of here since i haven't canned it a little while i'm a little skittish so i'm going to wear another mitt because that's super duper hot Actually, that one goes on this side. I don't know if it would make a difference. I just... There. And now what we do, we just need to wait till this comes back up to pressure and it starts dancing like a banshee. And um, I'll bring you back when that happens. All right, we're starting to dance. So now I'm going to turn the dial down to... I've never canned on this stove, so i got to keep an extra eye on this. I'll turn it down to the, like, uh, like between 5 and 6, because you want it dancing, but not constantly. Maybe two or three times a minute, just so it was loud. <laughs> just so it, the pressure releases you know that there's pressure in here like I said from these little pokers when the pressure goes down they'll drop back down into the pot so I'm gonna set the timer for 25 minutes now and I'll bring you back after that all right friends it's 1120 um, I'm just I have a pile of towels on my shoulder I'm about to hang the towels out it was raining this morning but it looks beautiful out now so I have enough for another load, but I'm not going to put it in now because Manly's about to have a shower, and then I'll put it in after that. So, Ooh, there we have it. I can feel it's going to be hot. The sun is hot today. All right, if you can hear me, <laughs> I have the fan going behind me and the pressure canner's over there, but the towels are out. I just took these two out of the oven, but there's one more in the oven that's not quite as golden as I want it to be, but these ones are done, and we're going to have one of these for supper tonight. Um, and the rest I'll freeze, but <laughs> I was going to vacuum out here after. Misha and Mays were playing with little setup, playing in the dining room. And that was the junk in the junk drawer that my husband fixed yesterday, if you've seen that video. But I'll just do a quick vacuum. It's not bad, but just while the kids are. But um, I might have to spin in and have to see how much time's left on that because it's 11.25 and the kids need to be picked up for 12. So we'll see. I just asked my Google timer, because I just get her to set the timer for me. There's 15 minutes and 4 seconds left, so I should have enough time to... Oh, Mally must be having a shower in the downstairs bathroom. Um, shut the things off when it's done. All, all you do is shut the burner off and leave it until the little poker goes down, so I could shut it off and zip to town. What, Mally? Yeah, just sack. Oh, there's no towels in the bathroom. <laughs> just a minute. There, she has a towel now. But when I go to town and when I get back, hopefully the pressure will be down enough. I can take those canners off the stove, and then I'm going to do those other rotter pies because those are those are the big things I wanted to do today. Um, that and can this bone broth. And if I can get to canning that tenderloin today, that would be great. And I have to see what other stuff. Oh, I have that ground breakfast sausage some crumble and all those scrambled eggs. I wanted to do bre breakfast wraps. I might get the kids to do that, to be honest. But I'll have to figure out where I'm going to put my canned jars because I usually put them on the table. I'll clear a spot on the counter, I think, because I want to have the table clear, even though I love it when my table's all cluttered up with mason jars. But, yeah, I'll clear a spot on the counter so I can put my canned goods. Because they're going to be super hot for a long time. And I don't like kids touching them or anything. So to make sure that they seal. And then we'll still have the table. And I can put any cooked food meals that I make. Or the kids can assemble those wraps. Um, they'll have space to do it. So, yeah, I'm just talking out loud. <laughs> All right, there's like two minutes left on the timer. I just wiped the table off. Those are sitting pretty. Um, I'm gonna put the jars that come out of the canners here. I'll have to use these to 
get them out of the canner, but that won't be till after. And I just added two of these chicken broth to the stock pot for the rapper pie. Oh, there it is, just a minute. So really, all we do is shut the burners off. That's it. I don't move it, I don't try to take the weights off of it, you don't try to cool down the pot or anything, you just let it sit and do its thing. And you'll know it's okay to take the lid off when those little red pokers poke down. Still gonna be super hot, but there's not gonna be pressure in there and there won't be any explosions or anything. So now I'm gonna get my um, shoes on and head out the door. Mally's here, my husband's in bed, I don't think he's feeling well. So when I get back, I, I, yeah, I want to start that rocker pie, and then I want to bag up that ham in the food saver thing. I need to learn how to use that again. I've only ever used it twice, and that was a couple of years ago. Crazy, craziness. I bought a second ham from my sister-in-law. Anyways, I need to head out the door. Well, I got to the school right on time, so let's go get the kids. 12.23, we just walked home, and those little pokers are down, so it's okay to take off. These are still very hot. very hot but so I'll get you guys set up and we'll take a look at them all right so let me get my little tom things so I gotta twist it and I open it away from me because you see all that steam and watch the end closer to me it'll drip so I step my feet back a little bit because I don't want hot water landing on my toes See if any broke. Doesn't look to be. But these jars are still bubbling. Like they're still hot. I'm actually going to shut that fan off because I don't want a cooler breeze blowing on these. Until they cool down a little bit. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? Can you see that it's still bubbling? I'm gonna put it over here. It just popped. So I'll unload these and uh, I'll bring you back. canners but you can see one of my jars broke still sitting there but down at the bottom it broke so yeah it happens hear that popping <laughs> I love that sound so I'll get the rest uh, unloaded and then I'll show you that nice display they're singing to me it's like a symphony or an orchestra or something all right, here we go again. Um, I had to add, like, I filled up that with water to this broth, so I put two packages of onion soup mix in it this time. And I'm gonna bring this up to a roll and boil, just like this morning. I'll do the little shimmy shake with this stuff, and then I'll bring you back when I'm at the table. But I did wash these stinking pressure canners. That's a pain in the butt, because they're so awkward to wash, but they're washed. Um, I'm going to leave them there. I wash the gaskets right away when I'm done. And uh, yeah, I'll see if I can get to that tenderloin today. Okay, while I'm waiting for that broth to come up to boil, I dug out my food saver, wiped it off. Now I'm going to look up a video on YouTube to figure out how to use this again. And remember, it was super easy. It's just I, I haven't used it, so I want to make sure I do it and not waste the paper or the plastic. Oh. I see there's a roll of stuff in here, so I'm hoping that'll be enough for the ham. But yeah, we'll do that after we do the rapier pie. All right, I'm all set up. I'm going to make two big ones and four little ones, which is pretty much equivalent to three big ones. The chicken's there. I'm going to put these ones all in the freezer and 
one of the big ones and these ones in the freezer. We're going to have one for supper tonight. And I watched a little video on how to use this, so I think I can do it. I'm setting up a little station here. That's the ham. I'm going to do that right after I put these in the oven. And that'll be done. Um, yeah, hopefully it's as easy as this lady made it look. <laughs> Woo! <clears throat> 121 and I am done. I'm going to stick these in the oven, 350, and uh, then we'll move on to the ham. But looking good. I actually went out to the shop to get out of my husband's, like, cooler bag, a pepper shaker, because, yeah, my wrists are getting tired <laughs> of all that grinding. So, yeah, let's get these uh, puppies in the oven. All right. I know it's not good lighting. I have the light on and everything, but <sighs> let's try this. On open this up and I pull the size bag I want. I want a big bag. I'll probably do a couple of big bags. And there's a slicer here. All right. Almost looks like I know what I'm doing, huh? Close that. So the bag's open on this end and this end. You guys that have food savers probably know all about this stuff. But, um, now I stick it in here, so as far as I can, the lady said this can be a little tricky. As far as I can. Oh, I think she said the crinkle side should be up. Maybe that's... stop so it doesn't do the vacuum now and when the red goes off the bag will be sealed apparently we'll see pull it out yeah it's warm but that's sealed my hands are clean too guys so I have the ham right here this is an awkward station but my countertops are being used, and my table doesn't have a plug, and I don't know where an extension cord is. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to fill up the bag, and I'll probably end up doing two or three bags because I don't want to overload it. But yeah, the pies are in the oven now. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do the tenderloin after this while I have the canning gear out. I know I want to do those zucchini noodles and those breakfast wraps, but if I can get that canner going, then I can work while the, it's actually canning. That's mine. That's what I'm thinking anyways. I don't know if this stuff should be laying down or what. I guess the food saver, like it, you can tell it's a better quality bag and it makes the food last much longer. So this should be good for Thanksgiving, I would say. Hmm, it smells good. I'm surprised the kids didn't get into this, but I made it and put it away right away. So. I need the bag too big. Yeah, that's all I'll do. That's a lot. <laughs> I, I could get a lot more in there, but I don't know if I should do that or not. I gotta get it up on the knee because this is. Bag, so it'll probably take a minute. What is that? It's uh, sucking the air out of the bag. Now it's sealing. You can hear it sizzle. Watch out, Mish. My camera's right there. Say hi to these guys. I can't see you. Hi. There. 
It worked. How did it sizzle? Well, it's just the plastic melting. They look fancy. Fancy, fancy. So I'm going to put those right in the freezer now. Well, my husband's hungry, so I'm going to heat him up some of these keto cabbage rolls I made last week. Mm -hmm. There's that tenderloin that made a great big bowl. So that's good. I cut it up in chunks, not teeny tiny, but not great big like fillets or anything. So I'm going to wipe the table off and um, get my jar set up. And yeah, I'll bring you back when I'm ready to can this stuff. All right, fr friends. I just was looking at different recipes for canning pork. I can't remember if I've done this before or not. I'm just gonna raw pack it. You can par cook it and can it. You can season it up however and can it. I'm gonna raw pack it with no liquid. I'll put a half a teaspoon of pickling salt in there and that'll be that. I wanna just get this meat taken care of and then whenever the day comes when I wanna use this pork, I'll take it out and put it in whatever dish and I can season it up then. I find it's easier to scoop the salt out of the container. So, it's 2.27 now. And the day I just called, I'll move my water before my hands get dirty. Um, Medea called. She is coming over. Her birthday is this Thursday. And she works, which is unfortunate. I still would like to have a birthday cake on her birthday, just maybe at lunchtime or something. But I usually let the kids pick what they want for the birthday supper. And she just called and said, can we have a barbecue for my birthday today? I said, well, what would you like? She was like, oh, hamburgers or sausages. or I'm like, well, I don't have hamburger or well I have moose sausage but I know she won't eat that she was like I'll pick it up and I just said I'd pay for it or whatever and but the kids think they're having rubber pie so I'll give them the option I'll still barbecue that and yeah there'll just be a little bit of an option of what they want I'm packing this up since I'm not putting any liquid in this and this meat is going to shrink I pack it good and tight Let's see, I have more jars in the dishwasher if I need them. This would be handier if I had my stinking funnel. There. No, this is a quick way to, quick and easy way to do this. I don't have to add the liquid. <clears throat> I don't have to debubble or degas it. 
That's why we gotta pack it in there good. I have my pressure canner. I'm only gonna fill up one. I can't imagine that I have enough meat here for two pressure canners. Um, over there on the stove with the amount of water and a, the vinegar in it. So, and the water in there isn't hot because this is like a cold, cold raw pack. I don't want hot water in a canner and put cold jars because that's a recipe for it to crack. So, just the water, I mean, it was hot water from a tap, the tap, but that's not super hot. Put these jars in, I'm gonna wipe the rims, put the lids on. Oh, I have the lids over there on the windowsill. I gotta get them. <clears throat> but just like you've seen me do the bone broth today, the procedure's the same. Wipe the rims, put the lid on, put the ring on and put it in the canner. It's a big one. So, see if I can squeeze it all in. I can get another jar out if I need to, but I don't think I'll need to. That was a pretty big tenderloin. That's good. I'm going to take that meaty glove off. Oh, I forgot to put the salt in. I usually put it in first, but it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Half a teaspoon. You don't even have to put the salt in it. It won't spoil or anything. It's just for seasoning. You just can't use table salt, like iodized salt. I'm going to use pickling salt or kosher salt. There. All right, give it a wipe. Those bone broth jars are still warm over there. They're not hot, but they're still warm. And they've been sitting there for hours. That's what, I don't generally use, move my jars for like 24 hours at least. So they uh, are good and set. There. Okay. Well, let me get them loaded up in the canner, and then I'll bring you back and show you. All right. I have them all loaded in the canner. I'm going to turn them on. I put the lid on it, and uh, I'll bring you back when it's doing the venting thing. This has been venting for 10 minutes. Pretty strong okay, stuff. Okay, Bob, just a minute. I'm going to put a weight on and wait for it to jiggle. All right, I just turned it down. I set the timer for 75 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. And we just need to uh, let it ride. Well, I just cleaned off the table for the most part. Just parchment paper and tin foil and the rocker fries at the bottom. Wipe that part of the counter. Pressure cleaner is going. The jars are still cooling. Oh, I'm tired. I think I'm going to make a coffee. I had that one first thing this morning when I got up around, what was it, 5.30, quarter to 6. And it is 3.06 now, so it's still early in the day, but I'm feeling petered out kind of thing. So I'm thinking after um, those rapid pies come out of the oven, there's 17 more minutes for those. I'm going to start on those breakfast things because I want to get them done. And I'll probably just do them because I'm going to sit in here with the pressure canner and the kids don't really like that and I just want to get it done and over with. And then I uh, will see if I can do those noodles, zucchini noodles. If not, Medea might be here by then and we're going to barbecue. So we'll see. But I've already officially declared that it's going to be at least a three-day marathon instead of a one or two day. Just can't swing it, just can't do it. I could if I had to, but yeah. I'm hoping this uh, coffee is full of a live wire or something, so yeah, I'll be back. All right, I just made my coffee. 
but I just took these out of the oven. I'm going to put these ones in the freezers when I'm done my coffee because they're cool enough I could do that. These I'm going to sit out and uh, for a while yet, but um, yeah, my coffee's over here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to need this. All right, guys, I'm running out of table space. I'm going to whip through these. There's about 45 minutes left for the canner, and it's getting hot in here. I'm going to turn the fan on for now. And, yeah, I set this little table up with a pan and parchment paper, and I'm just going to load it up and load it up until I have no more of whatever I, whatever I run out of first, and then I'll try to figure out something else to do. she's making a baby one. So Mally came along and decided to help me out, which is awesome. We still have a ton of stuff left though. More sausage than eggs. Yeah. I'm going to have to get some more wrap things, but I'll do that tomorrow. This I still got ice in the coolers, honestly. The stuff that's in this one, it's still half frozen. It's still really good. Um, the two pans that I brought out are out in this deep freezer. I'll show you. Oh, it's crowded right now just because I have freezer meals there, but I've never done this before. I've seen a lot of people do it. You flash freeze them for a couple hours, then they'll kind of stay put, and you put them in a freezer bag. And then to reheat them, you just pop them in the oven or the microwave for a minute or so and heat it up. I suppose you could put it in the oven until it's warm through, but what do you have it on a toothpick? <laughs> what a good idea. Eat it. Oh, that's a good idea, though, Mally. Make a whole bunch of little toothpick ones. Smart. You are. That would be perfect. All right, the timer just went off on my Google, and I'm just shutting that burner off. So we'll just let it cool down till that little red thing pops down, and then we'll take it out of the canner. I have a towel here all ready to go. Look at my beautiful broth. These are still pretty warm. I mean, I can touch them now, but... They all seem to have sealed, except this one doesn't seem to be sealed. I haven't pushed down on it. We'll see overnight. But, I mean, if not, I can use that in one of the dishes that I make. I'm not worried about it. But all the rest seem to have sealed. This is great. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, friends, I'm down in my basement on one of my shelves. I have shelves all over the place full of jars. But... With rubber pie, we usually have bread and butter pickles. So I just came down to get that. I got some sauerkraut there, beans, black beans, uh, turkey soup, corn, more beans, a whole bunch of tomato, like whole tomatoes, mustard pickles. Yeah.
But now I can add pork to the menu. Peas. There's my mushrooms. Yeah, there's my wine stash. I don't drink it, but it's nice for when we entertain. There's some dill pickles. There's shelves over there. And oh my there's cobwebs all over the place, but yeah, shelves all over there. Those cardboard boxes are all empty jars but I have shelves all over there. And that's part of a new furnace that we bought we need to get installed. Or like the piping or venting, you know what I mean? Stuff that goes in the walls. Yeah, but anyways, let's bring the pickles up. I'm just about to open these. I just, uh, yeah, I made these last September, September 18. Yeah, these will only last a day or two. Honestly, the kids love these. A second. All right, Mally's done her skills. Aren't those little ones My cute? Skin. They're bite-sized breakfast burritos. Just like I make bite-sized cookies. You do. But I'm going to wrap this stuff up, and I'm going to get some more wraps tomorrow. I'm not getting any tonight, though. Mm. Really not. I'm tired. And I'm going to I'm going to cut up one of these and let the rest cool. These are still pretty hot. I'm not going to have to reheat these for supper or anything. But, yeah. Let me get uh, this all set up. Alright guys, I'm going to start dishing out supper because they're hangry. This is still pretty hot. Now, I could have let this brown a little bit more, but the other ones that are going in the freezer, they'll have to be put in the oven to be reheated and then they'll get even more brown when they do. And I just didn't want it to dry out. So, this has a little crisp on top, but it's not like, uh, sometimes you might see me make it and it's darker, but it's fine. I better get out. Oh, that's what I got this fork for. I don't know, can you see that? There's some pickles in the way. There we go. And you want some bread and butter? Mm -hmm. You want some butter on your wrapper pie? Yes. This is Mally's plate. Hola. You can't see me. No, they can't see you. Mm -hmm. Is that enough or do you want more? That's good. Alright. Um, here's the butter. I'm not holding the tripod because it won't stay still. So yeah, if you've never seen this before, it's uh, a French Acadian dish, and uh, yeah, it's it doesn't look all that pretty, but it's really good. But it is an acquired taste because it does have a strange texture if you're not used to it. This is kind of a thin piece, but yeah. there's a layer of chicken in between, and yeah, perfect. Now I can get the rest of the kids. Right, quarter to five and that little poker just went down so I'm about to take it out and then I'll show you when it's on the counter. Ooh, these are sizzling. I'm gonna let these sit right in this pot for a little while. I'm not gonna move them because they're piping, piping. All right, I got them out. I just dumped that pot out with the liquid and it's too hot for me to wash now. I gotta wait for that to cool down but yeah, look at that. Looks like it might have clumped together some, but I'm sure it breaks apart as soon as you open it. I'm curious to try it, to be honest. I don't know if it'll be, like, flaky as if it was done in a slow cooker or how it is. I don't know. But it's cooked. It smells good. And if the zombies come, I don't have to make a fire and alert them about my whereabouts. So I'll still have some uh, pork meat to eat. Just taking a little break. 9.55. It's 4.55. What a long day. But it doesn't seem like I did a whole lot in regards to cooking. I mean, I did a couple batches of canning and uh, food saver. But Oh, and wrapper pie. But uh, I just need a little break. And I'm thinking I'm going to try to do those zucchini noodle things. At least try to. We'll see. But I need to take these in. It's feeling like rain again. Hasn't started yet, but it feels like it might. But these are dry. Bone dry. <laughs> so I'll bring those in. Yeah, I got them on my shoulder again. But yeah, it looks even darker over here. I know it's hard to tell, but... 
Oh, it's still warm out, but not not like blaring hot sun like it was earlier. But yeah, for those that didn't see, that's our new van. We still have to get it registered and stuff. Um, I'm not a big in a. I'm in a rush to drive it, but I'm thinking I'll just beat around in the blue one the rest of the summer and then start September off fresh with this beauty. Well, new beauty to us. <clears throat> and yeah, I did drive it one day just down to the store just to try it. That was just down the hill and back. And we did have the truck license plate on it because I guess you have so much time to get a van home. So my plan was if I got stopped, which from here, not even a one minute drive uh, to the store, I would just say I'm just on my way home from picking up my new van. But. <laughs> I really just went down the hill. So, all right, I have these towels on my shoulder. I'm gonna go uh, get those sorted. All right, friends, well, let me see. I got out my noodle maker. Oh, if I can remember how to use this sucker. I just washed, I have a whole colander here. Of, they're not very big zucchinis, but yeah, we're gonna try to do this. And I realize now I have more meatballs than I'm going to have. Hmm. What am I not doing right? Yeah. I remember I bought this when I started first started doing keto. Thinking, oh, I'll make zucchini noodles every day. Or that's a good way to replace spaghetti and only used it a couple times. Those are little teeny tiny noodles, but they'll do. Anyways, see they're like spaghetti noodles, only longer. <laughs> the kids have all had their supper. There's still about a quarter of that pan of rocket pie left. So, and there's still a little bit of chili left from yesterday, that freezer meal I heated up. My son had some of that for lunch. So, tomorrow I can use up the rest of that stuff. Um, I'm thinking I might put that roast beef I have in the cooler in the slow cooker tonight and make kind of like a steak and egg omelet from my husband and I because I still never cook that bacon and do up some keto breakfast things. Oh, I'm going to have to get a big bowl. Is that as much as it'll do? Yeah. That's it. Look at that. <laughs> Funny. Funny. I'll do another one and then I'll get a bowl. So I'll bring you back Oops. when these get done. I have to poke it on the end here. Stick this here. Not too hard to figure out, but it's working. Coming out. Slowly but surely. There's different plates I can put in this thing. I'm just using the one I must have had in before. better with bigger zucchinis. I don't know. I'm not a professional. But I know you can buy zucchini noodles in the store and they're ridiculously priced. Like for this amount of zucchini noodles in a package, it's like $5.99 or something. I can't do it. I can't do it. Same with the cauliflower rice. You can buy that, but... I mean, it's insanely priced for the amount that you get. I hear the kids all upstairs. I don't know if they're playing or fighting. At least they're not hollering to mom. Because, yeah. <laughs> They've been good today, though, so that's that's nice. Um, they do have that little school thing tomorrow. 
I'm actually going to get a frying pan so I could just dump this in a frying pan. Uh, I know when I made zucchini noodles before, my teenager loved them. I think I made probably a spaghetti type thing, green beef, I forget now. Maybe I have it on one of my old videos. I can't recall. There. I'm going to fry those up. Oh, I think I have to squeeze the liquid out of those. So I'll put them in a towel and squeeze them out. And bring, bring you back. So let's pick up the pace. steaming it but I thought this would be quicker but it seems to be taking forever because I want to try and make a creamy cheese sauce with pureed cauliflower I've seen Darius from Darius Cooks do it but just make my own kind of version but that's where I got the idea from and I also sprinkled some salt on these zucchini noodles because um, you're supposed to squeeze them out or at least that's what I remember doing before. This is a clean tea towel. I'd use cheesecloth but I don't have any. And I've got quite a bit of liquid in. I tried it first without putting salt on it and then I remembered. I'll show you the, show you the amount but yeah this isn't very much fun. But I'll just wait till I want to show you how it comes out. See that? But it's Taking some energy to squeeze it. My son was just here chit chatting with me. I just don't want these noodles to be mushy, so I wanted to get the liquid out. I have more than half done, so that's good. It's taking some elbow grease though. I'm just using one of the trays the zucchini came in to catch it. It's not going on my table. I'll check that cauliflower again. That's in for like nine minutes. I don't know. It says ready in four minutes. <laughs> not so much. So I probably don't get every single last ounce of liquid out, but getting a good dose of it. So I'll bring you back when this is all done and that stink of broccoli is all done. I should have just steamed it. I was just trying to take a shortcut, but it doesn't seem like a shortcut to me. Still working on those noodles, but I gave up. They still weren't done, so I'm just going to steam them. And this doesn't take long at all. Like, this takes less than 10 minutes. And then I'm going to break out my food processor and put them in that and puree them. All right, they're all done. But this is the amount of liquid I got. Pretty good amount. And they still seem to stay deformed for the most part. So I'm holding you backwards so I can't see. Still good. So I'm going to clean up this table. And I'll uh, meet you at my food processor. Alright, it's 6.17. These are done. Didn't take too long. Just going to let them cool down a little bit. Then I'm going to put it bits in here with some heavy cream and puree it and then I'm going to drop it in this pot and I'll show you what that looks like.
right friends there's that sauce it turned out fantastic it's the first time doing it I was thinking I should have put some spinach or kale or something in it while I put it in the food processor or Parmesan cheese <coughs> but oh well it's my first time so I'm gonna turn this on medium I'm gonna add uh, what was I gonna add well this is that bowl of cheese that was for those breakfast burritos but I can always get more cheese tomorrow and I'm, I still might add a little Parmesan I don't want to add too much because this is gonna like the meatballs are gonna go in here the meatballs I made yesterday with the ground pork and the Tony Cheshire's and egg and those are kind of salty but they're really good um, I'm gonna wait till this starts bubbling and I'll add some cheese and probably a little sour cream so yeah I'll be back in a minute Still waiting for this to heat up. I might turn it up a little bit. But I'm going to add some onion powder. Ooh, a big clump fell out. Wonderful. And some garlic. Some minced garlic. I have the sour cream here on the counter, waiting for it to get warm. Ooh. I don't know about cauliflower. Will that scorch? I suppose it could. Good job, Maze. Good job. This is pretty thick. This would be an excellent um, thickening technique. Well, you'll have to hold your horses. If you go on out, I'll tell you when it's ready. I'm going to add some black pepper. I could add a little milk, which would be loosen it up a bit. I have some homogenized milk. Because I still want to add cheese to this. I just didn't want to add Parmesan because it would be like salty. I don't know. Because that seems really quite thick. But then it's making me think like I could make a keto turkey tetrazzini. If I could master a good cheesy creamy sauce. That's a little better. A little bit. Now I know I'm going to have more meatballs than I have sauce. It's maybe half of the container. This isn't a very good spoon. Maybe a whisk would be better. Ooh, I just bent my freaking thing. Come on. Can I bend your back? Ow, oh, sugar. It's not all going to fall in because it's stuck in the bottom of the bowl. But I'm going to do those zucchini noodles in a pan with a little bit of bacon grease, some garlic. And I put uh, parmesan in that too, but I just don't want it, the dish to be too salty. So I'll bring you back uh, when the sauce is about done and we'll get the noodles on. Alright, I just tasted this and it's really good. Uh, it's garlicky and cheesy. Some of that cheese was that pizza mozzarella. It's not salty, so this is going to match really good with these meatballs because, like I said, they're spicy and a little salty. Maze! I'm going to drop a few in here. We'll see. I had four of these meatballs today at lunchtime. <laughs> I really like them. Uh, this is, uh, I'll make this again for sure. I, I don't know if we have oatmeal maize. You'll have to just wait till I'm done, hon. He's acting like he hasn't eaten all day. Oh, we might. 
And then I'm just going to put a scoop over top of some zucchini noodles. I was thinking I'd mix it all together with zucchini noodles, but I, I think I'm not going to do that. I'll put the zucchini noodles in their own individual trays and then put a scoop of this over top and freeze it that way. And yeah, if you didn't see my video yesterday, these this is just my home ground pork with a whole bunch of eggs and kale. And I forget if I put nutritional yeast in that or not. I might have. Maze Quentin. I just got you a sandwich. I swear he had supper and then he just had a sandwich. Now he's saying he's hungry again. I think you're bored is what it is. He was upstairs playing with the girls, but got mad at them. I will not bother you if you get me something. You won't bother me if I get you something. I will get you something, but you need to hold your horses. I need to watch this or it's going to burn. So this is loaded with meatballs. So I'll bring out the frying pan and we'll get the uh, noodles going. All right, friends, this is bacon grease. I just used a margarine container. Just try to get the, get the whistle here, and then I'm going to drop those noodles in. I could put a little garlic in here, too, but I'll wait. I just have one of those meatballs. <laughs> I'm going to put those away. I might do these in the food saver tomorrow. Just to save them for another day. I'm putting it in the cooler. There. These only take a couple of minutes to fry up. Yeah, I'm going to put a little garlic in there. Not too much because there'll be some in the sauce. Try to mix it in there. And Parmesan would be good on this too, but again, I'm not, not with those meatballs, I'm not. If it needs it when I go to eat it, then I'll just sprinkle it on top. But it's good. I'm glad I got the liquid out of them because I don't want them to turn mushy. I still want them to have a little bite to it. Just so it holds its shape and stuff. Ooh. I'm going to put this away too. Anyways, I'll bring you back when this is all done frying. Well, I've got it all ready to rock. Let's see if I can fill these up. The noodles are still a little crispy, but not raw. They smell like garlic. I don't want too much because I need to get those meatballs in there. tricky because some of them are long and some of them are just little bits.
and those meatballs are pretty filling. Like they're loaded with stuff. And for people that are on keto, if you're fat adapted, that's all. A small meal like this is all you need. taste extra special when you eat it. Well, you could eat it if you were here, but you know what I'm saying. All right. Meatball time. This sauce probably hardens up. I'm thinking, oh, drop your meatball. Yeah, this is not a very good spoon. It's a rinky dink cheap one that bends. Cheesy mozzarella. I could sprinkle some parsley on top of this. I'm thinking for a decoration, really. Just so it's not just a big blob of white with a little bit of green background. Any other sauce I have left over, I'm going to save it and I could use that in something. Tomorrow maybe or just have meatballs and sauce with on top of cauliflower rice because I have cauliflower rice frozen. That might be good. Turkey bacon cauliflower rice. <laughs> Most of them have four meatballs, which is plenty, but I'll try to use them up. But knowing that this sauce is 80% cauliflower, that's pretty cool. I never thought about doing this before. get on good. There's a lone meatball. So I think that's enough sauce in them all. I don't want it all sauce, but I'm going to find my parsley and sprinkle it and I'll show you. All right, friends, look at that. Looky, looky. That looks pretty good, I think. Just the parsley for like a garnish just makes it look a little more fancy fancy and that's just sauce left in the pot I'm just gonna put it in one of those little plastic tubs and stick it in the fridge because I'm impressed with that I really am and I'm thinking I could make so many different versions of that again none of this food that I made today is any specific recipe it's just me winging it so I encourage you to do the same <laughs> but yeah let me flip you around all right, friends, it's 6.59. I'm gonna let these cool and put the lid on them. Those rapid pies are still kind of warm, so I'm gonna let those sit for a little while longer and then I'll wrap them up and put them in the deep freezer. I'll put these in the deep freezer and that's more keto meals. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm quite impressed. I will dig, I say I will, I might dig into the coolers after and maybe put something in the slow cooker. I want to, but I'm feeling tired. I'm knackered. 
So we'll see. If not, like I say, I, I'm looking at probably a three day marathon of trying to use up this food, but there's still lots of ice. And we're down to about one cooler worth of food, which is good, which is really good. And yeah, we did a lot. And thanks for the suggestion about canning. Like I wasn't even thinking about canning. And that was a lot of pork. I could have canned some of that ground pork if I'd have known, I, or if I'd have been thinking. But I'll just get some more of those t tortillas tomorrow and do up the rest of those breakfast um, burritos. And I don't have chicken now, but I'm thinking I'd like to do that for like chicken salsa, pepper, cheese, wraps. Because I know my son would love those. Um, the kids would like them too. I just have to be more specific. Some of them like pepper, some of them don't. But my teenager, that would be something easy because... Though he's 17, he's still a little kid sometimes, but that's all kids all, of all ages. So, anyways, I'm going to say peace, love, and happiness today and every single day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you so choose, but if not, that's okay too. I still love you. I still want all the happiness in the world for each and every one of you out there. I certainly do. I really, really honest and truly do. Yes, I do. So, I know I'm going to kick my feet up tonight, and I hope that you come back tomorrow, because having you guys here while I'm doing this really keeps me company seriously I know you think it's just a video but I really feel like you're here and I'm talking to my friends and I'm sharing my food with you and all that kind of stuff because uh, yeah it's true <laughs> alright guys I'm rambling I'm muttered or muddled so I'm gonna say have a good night or have a good morning and I'll see you tomorrow bye Boink.